glitching a lot. So, ah, what the? F welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. <gasps> but what not the? To worry. Now that you're probably in. Hello, everybody. I am that guy, Big Wolf, and welcome back to the Stanley Parable. As you can see, we have just finished the uh the the main ending in the last episode. We saw Minecraft. We saw me closing his door. And today we're gonna continue and see what other endings we can get. As you can probably see, there's a bunch of paper on the floor, which my employees are just are just lazy as fuck and can't clean after themselves. And now we're gonna clean them after no, maybe not. Wait, Stanley thought to himself. Am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? How is that possible? They yeah. never stopped. Surely I was mistaken. Yes, like why is everything like this? But anyways, I saw there's a there's an achievement over here if I do it for doing this one, so I'm gonna press this five times. Oh please. Are you really just doing this for the achievement? Yes. Close the door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, uh -huh. no, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Uh-huh. Now suppose you were to click the door twenty times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Hmm. I have to say, I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true effort for a noble cause. Yeah, fuck Perhaps you. 50 clicks will do it. Yes, 50? Almost certainly 50 clicks. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3, 9, 50. No, no, I'm, I'm still not feeling it. I, I want this achievement to have meant something. It has to be a, a true reward <laughs> for valiant effort. I want to see some hustle, Stanley. I want to see commitment, a willingness to go all the way, no matter what the cost. Uh, Why don't you go put 20 clicks into door number 417? 4, 4, 1, 4, 1, 7. 4, 1, 7, 4, 1, 7, 4, 1, 7, 4, 1, 7. Aha! Oh, great. Now, go click a few times on door 437. Uh, 4, 4, 3, 7, 4, 3, 4, uh, 4, 4, 3, 4, 4, 3, 4, 4, 3, 7. Four three seven four three seven four three seven. Okay, nope, not here. Four three seven. Ah! Excellent. I think we're getting somewhere. Now door four one five. Let's give it ten clicks or so. Four one five. Four one five. Four one five. Four one five. Ha! Ah, I got you. Now back to door number four three seven. Four three seven. Four three seven. Four. Three, seven. Aha, Let's you see. Can. How about you click on? Well, I don't know. The copy machine. Uh, All right, back to room four one seven. I'm really feeling it now. I think we're getting somewhere. Four one seven's over here again. Four one seven. Four one seven. Okay. Aha. Now go climb on employee four one nine's desk. Four one nine. Wait, 419's over here. 419's, aha! Yes! This is great! You're putting it all on the line, Stanley. I like that. All right, let's keep it up. Go give me a few clicks on door 416. 416. We've almost got it! Now the copy machine, do that one again! Huzzah! Finish it off, Stanley! Five clicks on door 430! Four three zero. Yes, we did it. Oh wow, that felt amazing. Oh, you really earned it, Stanley. Nothing Yay. to hold you back. Yes, I'm very proud of how far we've come today. Just think, only a few minutes ago, you believed an achievement was worth five little clicks. Really now, what were you thinking? I do not know. What's the math school? school? <coughs> Sorry. Anything else here? Whoa. Oh, that's cool. Any other cool sound effects? Hmm. Oh, there's a box. Nope. No box. Can I move it? Is there an option to move it? Whoa. I, I do not know you can do that. What other ones can I run into? 
I just realized you just you can just walk up on on things. How did I do that? That was cool. What the fuck? I'm just here like dicking around over stuff, and I just found out you can do this. How the fuck did I do that? That was cool. Okay, instead of that, apparently people are taking a shower in the background. What the fuck got on that desk? Okay. Oh! There we go. I just crouched over here. Cool. Can I get out here? Oh! At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the <sighs> game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Yes! Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Very okay, bright in my I face, know. though. Uh, what do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? Oh. Are you sick of this gang? No. Ah, then in that case, we'll continue. But now, here comes the real question. Uh -huh. What do you think would have happened if you had told me that you wanted this to stop? Do you think it would have been particularly different? Would I have taken the same idea but rephrased it superficially to fit that answer? Perhaps you never would even have thought of it if I hadn't brought up the issue in the first place. Oh, now think about it. Would it be worth it for you to restart and then come back here just to do the other option? Clearly this whole gag takes some time. What if the other option is even longer? How long will you spend in total just to have heard all the narration? Oh, and this is rich. Perhaps you've just played the other option, and now you've come to see what happens in this one. So, what do you think? Which choice was the better one? Imagine if you had selected continue on your first playthrough, how tantalizing it would be not knowing what happens when you pick the other option. Indeed, you huh. are one of the lucky ones. Though, if the other option is really miserable to listen to, then perhaps you're not. In fact, I'm just going to say that no one who's listening to this is lucky. Well now, I've built up the other option so much that I'm going to stop talking and leave you to your decision whether to come back here, continue with the game, or just sit in this spot forever and ever. Cheers. I'm going to do it again. First, let me just do this. Okay, we're going to do that again. It was fairly easy, so... Uh, oh, now the papers are gone. No, I ruined it. I want to see what happened. Hi, Stanley. I uh, just wanted to leave you a message to let you know there's a few things I need you to pick up on your way home from work today. We need milk, cereal, dish soap, spaghetti, get a thing of sugar, huh? some bread, and coffee beans, whichever ones you like. I'll give you a call if there's anything I forgot. Thanks, sweetie. See you tonight. Okay. Not my office, but that was cool. Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? Yes. Well, I don't know how to say this politely, but Whoa. you could literally just hit escape and restart the game any old time you want. Like, <laughs> right now. You could have done it just then. Now would also be an appropriate time <laughs> to quit. Any of these points and so many, many more, all of them are appropriate. I'm enjoying what seems to be an internal conflict going on where you are literally unable to act on your own desires to restart the game. So, just to push the envelope, I'm going to try and make this as miserable as possible and see <laughs> how long you can maintain. <laughs> oh, wow. There once was a man <laughs> who people considered so manly. <laughs> but the truth must be told. He was not very old, and was quite particularly gangly. <laughs> what Stanley liked most was buttons. He pushed them like some kind of glutton. <laughs> he did it all day in a meaningful way. But his brain had long ceased to function. <laughs> which is why he is in this parable, and lives an existence quite terrible. And if you are not strong, and keep playing along, you too will become quite unbearable. <laughs> this is you awesome. Too will become quite unbearable. <laughs> this is dope. This 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 is definitely a good game.
Definitely one, definitely one of my most favorite now. Are you done? Narrator? Narrator? Are you done? Are you done? I will say, that was kind of interesting. Okay, save. I don't know what that does, but we'll save just in case. Okay. On to... All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. How dare you interrupt me. Unto the game. Wait. Is this the same? Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. This is different. This is way different than that. Wait. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This is different. Hold the fuck up. What happened? I guess we go this way. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. We're gonna go down. To a staircase, Stanley walked Let's go down. To his boss's office. What's down here? Hmm. Car? But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence Wait, in a B? single moment for no reason at all. One, two, B, four. Oh. Any logical okay, sense. Whatever. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? <gasps> why what? did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? Wait. And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply <gasps> repeating? No, Stanley. You're right. Himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. Huh? This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real life this is... pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So... He imagined himself flying and began to gently float above Whoa. the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and what it too appeared. <laughs> it was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Huh? Why Wait, what? is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Wait, that's not normal for you? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who uh. found it particularly strange. Uh. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered hmm. if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, hey. the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? May Believing maybe, that uh... If he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. 360. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. Huh. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was, in fact, a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if um. he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. So he um. closed his eyes gently. And he invited hey, hey, himself no, no, no. to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. The press of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, 
he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please. Um. It's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. Uh-huh. I am okay. Are you sure about that? Yep. Hmm. Stanley began screaming. Please, <laughs> someone wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just Whoa, someone was that, tell was that me part I'm of real. That? I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? I don't know what's and going on. Black. Oh. <laughs> this is the story of a woman named Mariella. <laughs> wait. wait. <laughs> Mariella woke up on a day like any other. <laughs> she rose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. <laughs> but on this particular day, her walk was interrupted the by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she was wow. soon turned to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered <laughs> the strange man. Uh. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Uh. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. Uh -huh. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. Uh, sure. Then she remembered the meeting she I had keep on my mic. I'm sorry. Day the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension the rest of her life she had no time for this so it was only a moment that she stood there staring down at the body and then she turned and ran and then she dies okay that was a a weird ending we got the insanity ending and ending into us thing let's continue even now, Stanley's office was a distant memory. What did it look like? There was a computer, perhaps, and a painting. Was it a painting or a photo? That's new. I no longer recall. What the? Um, that was new dialogue. Oh, okay. I guess we'll continue. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No. <laughs> this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. 4v9? What the hell? Alright. Well, Hello. Yes, this room. Mm -hmm. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Um. New. I will not go there. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Oh, yeah. I was afraid to tell you guys. I want to go up there. That's what I was trying to do. Look, we've Stanley, seen this one. Perhaps we've got Let's go over there. The wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy. What if I just jump down and die? I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about okay. nothing but you or... His eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley <laughs> leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone <laughs> thinks you are very powerful. <laughs> yeah, I cut off. Okay. That was a good one. That, that was funny. We just committed suicide. The lounge was sublime. A work of art. What was it about Sublime? this room Where? that called so deeply and I know so that song. personally to st left? Stanley was so bad at following directions, <laughs> it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, 
Stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. Okay, sorry about that. I was getting yelled at again. But, let's continue. Okay, that's the first time I've been over here. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. Who? She's been waiting. Who? Who's waiting for me? Hello, forklift. Bulldog. What's in here? Whoa. That's her, Stanley. You need to be interrogation the one to room this, to reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Uh, sure. Why not? Whoa. You're in an apartment at 427? Oh, right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. Whoa. <laughs> uh. Gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Uh... Okay then. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Wait, wait, what? Wait, press J on the keyboard. Okay. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Uh-huh. Look at him there, pushing buttons. Shut up. Exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing Wait. a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's uh, going home. The... Now he's coming back to work. What the... One might even feel sorry for him. Hold except on. that he's chosen this life. Six. Oh, ROM six. But in his mind, ah. In his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that here? none of it would ever happen to him. F to watch TV. And so he began <laughs> to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that what one the? day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, Everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. Uh, press I to spend time with the boys? Sure. So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors no. and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. Um, the mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. Press K to prepare dinner? No. As he wandered through this fantasy oh. world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. <gasps> Down one path lay an enormous round room with <laughs> monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a like, game with a baby. Yellow line? And he called what? it the Stanley Parable. Press eight. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again. Nice tits. And then again, and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end. Uh. And he might always <laughs> feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he my apartment is turning into my office. Press O. Oh, oh, zero. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? Oh. In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. Press eight to sleep. And I'm trying to tell him this, that in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. 
that as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Okay. Gotcha. Not pressing it. You can't make me. No. It's gonna make me do it anyways. There's nothing else. It's not, it's not gonna progress unless I press it. So, cannonball. You see? Can he just not hear me? And then How we're back in our office. That he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself. How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? Does he the question nothing? Sure. I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. <laughs> I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Okay. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. Please die. And, <laughs> and I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried. <laughs> then I tried again. And then you pressed the button. And then I tried again. And then you pressed the button. <laughs> Please die. Someone meme that. <laughs> okay, that was a, a weird ending. All right. Next one. What should we do? How long was I sitting there? Stanley um, wondered to himself. Minutes? Days? Centuries? Did something crucial happen while my senses were turned? He made a note to be more careful with time from now on. I want to see what happens in that room, because if... I wonder if you, if you can unplug it. That's... I don't know. We'll see. If it doesn't happen, I won't show it, but if it does, I'll show you. So, I'm going to get there real quick. That yes, here. Step. Now I just go. Oh no! no, no <laughs> you can. No, you can't. Did you just unplug the phone? Now, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't even know that was possible. I mean, either. Double check. <laughs> no. Paper. It's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. <laughs> As it comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Roll credits? There is no credits there. It's actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? Huh. None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you- Answer the phone now. a second. Did I just see- No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <gasps> How'd you know? <laughs> There's no way. I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real world decision making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so no. I can educate you properly on safe decision making in the no. real world. No, 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 Please no, no. observe this helpful instructional video. Choice. <laughs> it's the best oh, okay. part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, it can uh -huh. also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical wriggle person named Stephen has wriggle a choice. person? He could spend years helping improve the quality of life for citizens of impoverished third world nations. Uh -huh. Or he could systematically set fire to every orphan living in a 30 kilometer radius of his house. Perfect. Which choice would you make? Remember uh, that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice um, that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking <laughs> with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. <laughs> Turn to a partner and practice saying, My goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. No! Excellent. 
Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making <laughs> process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Eight? Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant. And wow. the feeling should subside. Thanks. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material created in this video. It's glitching a lot. So <gasps> what the f Welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. <gasps> but what not the to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This is Wait, weird. Please. That's weird. Cinematic. Okay. That was cool. So I guess I can just go back here. Oh wow, you put fences here? Wow, now you're we know your choices are meaningful. We can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Ah, fine. Senselessly halfway through the story, that story would make no sense at all. Mm -hmm. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. Really? You don't play? Okay. Guess I can't kill myself there. Oh, okay. Thanks for opening the door for me. Uh huh. Where we are going back to the beginning? What's going on? Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending. The story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Uh huh. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm ah. sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead, okay. and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay. Got it. No! Why did you <gasps> do that? Quickly, hurry <gasps> back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. What the, what the fuck? It's glitching out. What the f This is cool. Whoa, that is weird. Whoa. <laughs> this is cool. Sorry, did not mean to do that. I just want to see what happens. Oh, <gasps> Whoa. You, I can't believe after everything we talked about that you... My story, you've destroyed my work. Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, this well, is... It, it's worth this. <laughs> what am I supposed that? to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that the story oh, is now oh. incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To no. willingly destroy no, 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 all no. of my work? I don't know. No, no, no. This is cool. What's I love answer? this. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Grr everywhere. I have, to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. Please don't. I like this bed. This is way better. Interesting. Stanley has died. And what? Oh, I'm, I'm here. I'm still here. Here in this pile of rubbish. With you. You. Who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine and you've run it into the ground. You're welcome. What? Did you think that would be funny? Yeah. You just had to see? Uh-huh. Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? I am he actually Johnny, knows how to do Stanley. What I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? Nope, not once. A world outside of you? Nope. You're a child. Can't move. Oh, there you go. My story. 
If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I uh -huh. worked so hard on it. I tried so hard. Uh, oh, uh, thanks. Bye. Behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. What? Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Got it. Reverse psychology. No! Why did you do that? <laughs> Quickly, hurry back. <laughs> it just starts over again. <laughs> behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Left. No! Why did you do that? Uh, okay. Sorry. Hurry. Is behave exactly as Stanley. Okay, so Stanley wants me to do this one. Okay. Responsibly Got it. And always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set and of two open doors, doors he went to the and went on his left. Left, got it. All right, Katie, you're in, you're in my way. By the way, my cat's in my mouse pad. Oh, there was not a single person here either. That's weird. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Broom closet ending. Nope. Okay, you locked the door. Thank you. Fuck you. Come into the staircase. <laughs> he Stanley locked it. Upstairs to his boss's office. <laughs> wow. Thanks. <gasps> oh, wait, this is different. Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Please Stanley speak wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. Until he saw the door with a voice receiver. I like this room better, actually. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. Cap, yeah, don't look. And beyond all probability, it's not what you think it is. Passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Is <gasps> this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. I can't speak. I can't talk. I'm Stanley. <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. <laughs> he spoke it into the receiver right there on the wall. I am. I am the most I'm sorry, expensive sir, boss. You didn't mishear me, did you? Please speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. I can't talk. Sorry, Mr. Narrator. Okay, fine. You're not going to do it. But you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing, for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his oh. choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why <laughs> did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. <laughs> you coward. When Stanley Whoa. came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. <laughs> Wait. Stanley? Hello? Uh. Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I I need you to make a choice. The end. <laughs> but this is the actual ending. Can you hear me? Is everything okay. okay? Stanley, this is important. <laughs> the story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Well, that's Should Stanley. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. <laughs> the story needs it. So, 
You hear me? Are you there? Are you listening to this? Danny, are you there? Dude. Okay. It's okay. I, can I love this game, bro. This is a... Congrats on whoever made this, because this is a fucking... Oh, there it is. Game... This game was made by Galactic Cafe. <laughs> fucking... Dude. Best game... This is like one of the best... One of my most favorite games so far. This is dope. <laughs> There's still more we gotta do, because I... I've only done so much. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Okay. Well then. Okay. Was this always here? I think it was. Okay, well, thank you guys so much for coming. If you want to see more, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and want to see more. And I'll see you guys next time. My outro is still trash, and I don't care. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. There once was a man named Stanley, who people considered so manly. But the truth must be told. He was not very old and was quite particularly gangly. What Stanley liked most was buttons. He pushed them 